Hello everybody, this is Jacob from NextGen. Today I'm going to start the video series entitled Understanding Access Control Lists. In this particular video will be part one, Standard IP Access Control Lists. There will also be a part two, Extended IP Access Lists, and then also a part three, Advanced Wildcard Masks. And I'm going to begin here with some basic information, some general ACL rules, then some standard IP ACL rules, and also a brief example of some of the commands we're going to be doing. Starting off here on the left are general ACL rules. Our number one rule is we need to always first create the access list before we move on to applying it. So first we have to create a particular list and then we will apply that list to an interface. You'll see this in action when we go through our exercises. We will need at least one permit statement due to our implicit deny at the end of every list. If we don't have at least one permit statement, all traffic according to that list will be denied all ACLs are processed from top down. This means that we need to have our more precise statements at the top. So, if we were to have in our access list a statement referencing a host, we'd want to put that before a statement that referenced a network because the host is more precise than the network, so it needs to go on top. And lastly, we will have one access control list configured per protocol, per interface, per direction. In other words, you can't have two or more inbound or outbound access control lists applied to the same interface. This next spot here is rules pertaining directly to standard IP access control lists. The range for standard lists is 1 through 99. There's also an expanded range of 1300 through 1999. So when we're creating our access list, we can use these numbers to signify that it is a standard IP access list. Standard IP access lists always filter based on the source. So if we're writing our list, we need to write that list based on where the traffic is coming from. When we apply that list, we need to apply it on an interface on the router that is closest to the destination network. So the list itself is based on the source, but then we need to apply the list closest to the destination. Following here on the right, or some Cisco commands and that is what we're going to be talking about in these exercises is how to configure a Cisco router with these access lists. So for step number one we have here create an access list. In order to do that we need to be in global config mode and we will use the command access list followed by the number so we could use access list 1 or 99 or 1301 any of those would work for a standard access list. Followed by the statement permit or the statement deny and then the IP address or network ID and the wildcard mask. The mask here is not a subnet mask. And really, if you were thinking about a network, if we wanted this access list statement to apply to a particular network, we would be using the inverse of the subnet mask. So if we had this network here, 10.10.10.0 in our access list statement with a 24-bit mask, which is normally in decimal, 255.255.255.0, if we wanted to use it in an access list statement, we would use the inverse to get the wildcard mask, which would be 0.0.0.255 .0 instead of 255.255.255.0. So after we create our list, we then need to apply it. The commands to apply it are as follows. In interface configuration mode, when we're applying the list to a physical interface, we will use the command IP access group followed by the number of the access list that we are applying and then the direction which is in or out. Some people get confused about this direction in or out. Just keep in mind that it's always in reference to the router itself. If we're configuring inside of a VTY line we use the terminology access-class for our command. So access-class followed by the number and then also the direction. And normally that will be inbound for VTY lines. VTY lines are used to configure the router remotely via Telnet or SSH and that's why we would use this particular command to protect the router's VTY lines. So now we're going to begin the actual exercise by popping up some requirements here on the board. And the first requirement is we would like to prevent host 192.168.50.50 which is down here in the bottom left from accessing the network 10.10.10.0 which is over here on the right. So we're going to need to create a list that prevents this host from talking to this network over here on the right 
and this network is connected to fast ethernet 0 slash 1 and if you remember from the rules we stated earlier we need to apply the access list closest to the destination so in this case the destination is this 10 10 10 0 network and we'll be applying the access list on fast ethernet 0 slash 1 let's go ahead and have a look at the commands required to do that in this example we are configuring an access list which will be called access list 1 so in global configuration mode we would type on a Cisco router access-list 1 in this case deny host 192.168.50.50 and then we will need to add a permit statement underneath that to permit any other traffic access-list 1 permit any that is our list that is as simple as it gets it's just two lines here in order to prevent the host 192.168.50.50 using this list now when we apply it we're applying it to fast ethernet 0 slash 1 we need to access that interface get into interface configuration mode and type IP access dash group 1 out so anytime this host 192.168.50.50 tries to send traffic to 10.10.10.0 it's going to hit this interface fast ethernet 0 slash 1 and will try to go out of that interface to get to this network and once it tries to go out it will be ran against the access list number one and it will be denied based on that rule deny host 192.168.50.50 if another host such as 192.168.50.52 comes in and wants to talk to this network it will be allowed because of the permit any statement now we're going to move on to requirement number two in requirement number two we would like to prevent network 10.10.10.0 from accessing the internet in this case the internet is connected to our router via interface serial 1 slash 0 so we need to build an access list that references the whole entire network 10.10.10.0 and then permits anything else we're going to need to apply it to serial 1 slash 0 since that is where our internet is connected and we'll be applying that outbound because that is the direction of flow from the router for 10.10.10.0 to get to the internet here we have our commands creating the access list in global configuration mode access-list2 in this case we use 2 because we already used 1 deny 10.10.10.0 with the wildcard mask of 0.0.0.255 the next statement we need to permit any other traffic access-list2 permit any next we need to go ahead and apply that list we did state that we needed to apply it to serial 1 slash 0 because that is where our connection to the internet resides so we access that interface via interface serial 1 slash 0 command and then type IP access dash group 2 out that is going to stop any traffic coming from 10 10 10 0 trying to go out of serial 1 slash 0 in this last requirement we would like to prevent all users except for the host 192.168.50.50 from accessing the router's VTY lines. Now, when we apply this access list that we create here, it's going to be different, remember, because we're going to use the commands access class instead of IP access group because we're applying it to VTY lines rather than a physical interface. So let's go ahead and look at the commands required for us to create this access list and then apply it to the VTY lines. Here we have our new access list we're creating via global config mode on the Cisco router. Access list 3 permit host 192.168.50.50 and that is the only command we actually need in this access list because we want to deny all other traffic in this list we're permitting this host but denying everything else because of the implicit deny the invisible command that is underneath access dash list 3 deny any so after we've created this list we then need to apply it to the router in such a way that it stops anyone who is not 192.168.50.50 from configuring it via SSH or Telnet. In order to do that, we need to access the VTY lines via global configuration command line VTY 0 space 4. After that, we're in line configuration mode and we can type access class 3 in. This will apply the access list inbound to our VTY lines. Now, anytime 192.168.50.50 tries to access the VTY lines inside this router to configure it, it will be permitted based on this access list statement. Anything else will be denied. So that wraps up our video on a standard IP access control list. 
Hope you're going to look forward to part two, extended IP access lists, and then part three, advanced wildcard masks. I would like to thank you all for viewing this video. I would like to remind you to please visit our Twitter at www.twitter.com slash nextgent. You can also visit our blog, which has these video updates as well as some interesting posts at www.nextgent.com forward slash blog. That's www.nextgent.com forward slash blog. Thank you.